welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I want to list for you the seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision there are seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision you call koinonia this is the jurisdiction of the mandate that have been given by god i may not have all the time to just teach on them i just want to list them and we'll pray no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Someone in the media, I just saw the power of God. And I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Submit to your work in me till the Christ be formed in me, till your glory be formed in me, till your power rests on me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Pillar number one. Please write if you can. If you're with the Holy Ghost, that's fine. You came to church. This is what this is about. The seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. This is the first pillar. Seven of them God has given the message of salvation. This is the first and the greatest mandate that we have. Please listen, Koinonia Global. Everyone who is part of this vision, I want you to hear. This represents the jurisdiction of our call, our assignment, the mantle that works upon this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. John 3, 16 and 17. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son John 3 16 and 17 that whosoever believeth in him listen carefully should not perish but have everlasting life 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved our first mandate as a ministry is to see to it that the revelation of Jesus as Savior reaches the ends of the earth in order of priority the greatest task and assignment upon this vision and indeed i believe it extends to every true commission of jesus christ across the globe is the message of salvation predicated upon the fact that all have seen romans chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24 it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god this is the verdict of God as touching the fallen man. Verse 24, it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, and when you read from verse 10, Romans 10 and verse 10, here's what it says, that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, we're reading to 13, it says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, hallelujah, shall not be ashamed. Verse 12, it says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek when it comes to the need for salvation. There is no difference between the educated and the uneducated. There is no difference between Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. There is no difference between the Spanish, the Indian, the Caribbean. As far as the need for Jesus is concerned, it says, For the same Lord is rich over all 
who call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved our assignment is to propose Jesus as Savior to reveal the plan of redemption I have told you the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus his son are we together now to the end that men and creation listen carefully that as you place your faith upon Jesus you would receive the life of God that is the promise that we have been given we must let the nations know that Jesus saved not just that Jesus gives prosperity in order of priority the salvation of their soul is far superior to prosperity and any other thing this is why we travel from pillar to post this is why we carry the burden of the gospel across the nations it is more than just an exegesis of truth you only transform people who are saved remember in this house i have taught you that the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of an unbeliever is not welfare welfare may provide a momentary succor jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Nadau kakasunanka ubangi chika isayabo nakir mama sunanka ubangi ji Nina dau kaka sunanka ubangi chika isayabo nakir mama sunanka Listen to me ladies and gentlemen for as long as he keeps us alive and for as long as there is breath in our nostrils we will let the nations know that he died for them that there is a way out they must not go to hell the holy ghost is walking with us it says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you this is why we are doing our uk conference this is why we are going to the us canada and as many places as he would take us this is why we travel from pillar to post within and outside this nation sometimes you are tempted to ask why this stretch i saw our father in the lord daddy Gio, and at his age this man still travels from pillar to post and one time i got to a discussion with one of his people and i said wow daddy is still traveling like this won't he rest and they laughed he said i will rest when i get to heaven now that is a warrior indeed that for as long as he's alive and breathing with this body even if it means to spend it for him the gospel the message of salvation Believers, anybody who is not harvest conscious, mission conscious, is not truly connected to this vision. The first pillar that drives what we do, the first message is the message of salvation. Number two, very quickly, what is the second doctrinal pillar that drives this vision? The message of transformation. Write it down. When we get people saved, we do not leave them at that realm. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, But be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. Watch this. 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. This is why the word of God in this ministry gains utmost supremacy 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Jesus Christ. Reading to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. The word perfect there means matured, entire, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That means scripture affects every realm of life. Whether you are in ministry, you are in business, it can make you furnished unto all good works. The message of transformation is what brings us into the, the teachings of the mysteries of the kingdom. The ability to impart wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The teaching ministry is built upon this second mandate. The message of transformation. Don't forget what we are considering tonight. This is the message. The seven doctrinal pillars that guide and represent what we do. The message of transformation. So every week when you come in and as we travel across the regions, teaching from one dimension to the other, the spirit of revelation that he has granted us so lavishly is to the end that the saints be equipped, be entire, be matured. And I can tell you that for as long as he keeps us alive and healthy we will continue to learn the ways of god in the name of jesus christ are you ready for the third very quickly what is the third doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision the message of empowerment the message of empowerment god has granted us the unique ability to reveal and demonstrate the reality of his power that under our watch, our generation cannot be bankrupt of power. This cannot be a powerless generation. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we read it already. Micah 3 verse 8, we read it already. This is where the teaching on the ministry of the Holy Spirit comes. Listen, when you see us spend time in worship, when you see us spend time building intimacy with the Holy Spirit, when you see us invest time in the prayer ministry, it is because we have been given the message of empowerment acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word are we together yes we must pray and cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We have been given the message of empowerment. Can I tell you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is real. This is why you see some of the manifestations that happen, happen. It is because it is not just a desire. It is a mandate and a ministry. And there are angels that are sent to signify that revelation according to revelation chapter 1 and verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave unto john to show his servant the things that must shortly come to pass the bible says and he sent it and signified it by his angel when god gives mandates there are angelic release that ensure that every time you are walking in that mandate certain results should happen he sent it and signified it by his angel so the message of salvation the message of empowerment I mean the message of transformation the message of empowerment what is number four very quickly the message of the supernatural this is where signs and wonders come in hallelujah signs and wonders the ministry of the supernatural the message of the supernatural signs wonders deliverances breakthroughs god has not only given us the mandate to impart his grace and to empower god's believer but the demonstration of the reality of the kingdom the supernatural signs and wonders and miracles acts 4 33 and the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all 
let's read romans 15 19 together romans 15 19 together it says through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, i have fully preached the gospel of christ the gospel of christ is not fully preached until the dimension of signs and wonders is captured it said through mighty things through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the holy spirit so that from jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, i have fully preached we will not preach a half gospel the ministry and the message of the supernatural that means the supernatural should not be strange to you as a believer and then connected to this vision is why you see all kinds of things there are strange manifestations of the spirit that sometimes i just wonder he's in koinonia remaining to just have people start flying around while service is going on <laughs> by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your please number five what is the fifth doctrinal pillar are you ready number number five is a very serious one the message of purpose write it down the message of purpose kingdom advance put in bracket and societal transformation the message of purpose kingdom advance and societal transformation this is where our teachings on witnesses raising agents of change and so on and so forth understanding the cosmos you see now you see me bring several teachings i'm showing you that the teachings that you hear week in and week out are guided by these pillars the message of purpose watch this what gives credence to your empowerment what gives credence to all your desires is purpose and this is a challenge respectfully speaking with the body of christ we understand things we want things but we do not connect them to purpose we want prosperity without purpose increase without purpose this is where i so greatly miss dr miles munro hearing me from heaven may god bless you sir I will say it more personally when we get there but for now on behalf of Jesus and his people thank you for helping us walk in purpose it is the reason why by the grace of God he brought the message of purpose and of the kingdom his first book that I read discovering your potential or understanding your potential and then all of his books about the kingdom any of his book you find read it you have my endorsement provided it is him please read it hallelujah now watch this it was dr miles munro by the grace of god that brought the transformative dimension of the gospel to me because coming from an evangelical background with all due respect we were not properly mentored in translating the reality of the gospel to a context that advances kingdom and transforms society and many many men and women of God respectfully speaking we are very limited in our doctrinal scope I was having a discussion with some diplomats earlier this year and we were discussing Africa they, you know and um, just discussing why in spite of the several churches in Africa and several of us men of God we have not seemed to attain onto a standard of freedom from corruption moral decadence and other things and I did observe lovingly and respectfully to them that the problem is the content and the scope of our teachings that there is hardly applicability 
to the many teachings that are upon our pulpits. And I say this with every sense of honor, respect, and responsibility. There is a lot of gyration. There is a place for that. There is a lot of, you know, spiritism activities, you know, but the, the, the point of application, when you study homiletics, classically speaking in theology, one of the things they teach you, homiletics is the art of teaching and preaching. There must be a point of application to your teaching. Are we together? So no matter what route you take, at the end of your discourse, you are mandated to leave your audience with the point of application. They must know what to do with the message you have given them. And let me tell you this. I, I think it was while I was preaching in Ghana that I said this. We must be able to bring the context of the gospel in Africa that empowers people to be useful Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And the key is purpose. Are we together? If I teach you on prosperity, I must teach it in such a way that does not just make you a money monger and a fanatic just wanting money without purpose. It's why we have a lot of young people right now on rampage. Once they touch a few millions, they begin to misbehave because they were only taught finances without God and without purpose. So they crash land what was supposed to be a blessing destroys them. A man gets married to a woman, they don't understand the purpose of the marriage. So they don't know what to do with themselves. A man gets a job, he got educated, does not know what to do. Purpose is what gives longevity to impact. Are we together? So when we teach about being witnesses, when we teach about being ambassadors, as God has so graciously granted us the grace, to have a, the unique expression of our school of ministry. All of this is in honor to this foundational pillar, the message of purpose. We must understand God's program. We must understand societal transformation. Hallelujah. In John chapter 18 and verse 37, John 18, 37, let's look at a few scriptures. John 18, 37, watch this. Jesus is standing before Pilate and here's what he has to say. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. He said, To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Say purpose. Acts chapter 26, when you read from verse 12, this is now Apostle Paul standing before King Agrippa, if you remember, to make defense of the gospel. They had granted him an opportunity audience with King Agrippa. And here was his discourse. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, uh -huh, it says, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me. And them which journeyed with me. 14. It says, And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. 15. It says, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Watch purpose now. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things which in which i will appear unto you reading to 19 it says delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. The last verse, he says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Without purpose, there is nothing to be obedient unto. Listen to me. Dr. Miles Munro will say your purpose and assignment is not what you are living for. It's what you can die for. When it has to do with purpose, it takes more than living. You must be willing 
The hymn writer says, I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my post. Nobody will kill you. You will finish your assignment in full. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke untimely death. Amen. Don't fear death. Death has an ear. It is a rider upon one of the four horses in Revelation. The rider upon the pale horse, he said, his name is death. Death is a spirit. You can cast it far from you. It is not a mysterious phenomenon that has, that has unrestrained dominion over you. No, sir. The Bible says, O death, where is your sting? And O grave, where is your victory? For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. For death will not hold me captive, even in the grave, Jesus. Listen, I want you to have an understanding that until your assignment is done, no spirit, not by witchcraft, not by accident, not by bloodshed of wicked men and terrorists. Now, don't feel bad about those who may have gone before you. Don't worry. Thank God they died in Christ. But since you are now alive, somebody say, I will finish strong. Let the devil hear you say, I will finish strong. By this profession of faith, I cause every manifestation of untimely death as a pattern. If there is anyone here, your family members just seem to be dying anyhow, and you are asking who is the next person, I say it prophetically, the last death will be the last. Don't drive out in the morning wondering, will I return? Did you not read what the psalmist said? That I slept and I waked, for the Lord sustained me. Listen, if there was anybody who should die in the Bible, a lesson to refuse to die is Job. A man who had all the boils and the plagues. I'm not a medical doctor, but I know there is no record of Job going to the hospital. In that situation, he should die. He refused. Mm. I know my Redeemer liveth, he said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And at the end of his life, he was healthy enough to have double of children again. Say, I refuse to die. Refuse to die. This is not out of fear. No. In Christ, even when he said to be absent in the body, is to be present with the Lord. But Paul said that I remain is expedient for you. There are lands to conquer. There are several things to do. Are we together? Yes. Several lands to conquer. Don't, don't, don't glorify death in a point to a point that you make it look as if it can just take you anyhow. No, that's not what happens to believers. The Bible calls transition for the believer sleep. And it says, they that sleep, sleep at night. When you sleep in the daytime, it's called siesta. It's a short nap to rise up. They killed Paul, he said, I've not finished. They killed him again, he said, I've not finished. When he finished, he said, I've finished. Even Jesus said, it is finished. Everybody saying, it is finished. And then they leave. For as long as you have not said, it is finished. It is not over. Are we together? The message of purpose. In Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16, Jesus was speaking about the, this, about the believer in Christ. Here's what he calls us. With respect to purpose, he says we are salt. He said we are light. Go to verse 16 for sake of time. In verse 16, he says to let your light so shine before men. These are the teachings that now relate to purpose. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven matthew 28 please give us from verse 18 to 20. we call this the great commission here's what jesus said to do he spake unto them saying all power the word power there is exousia authority in is given to me in heaven and in earth 19. go ye therefore does that look like a mandate and teach all nations this synoptic account does not just say preach the gospel as Mark presented his own. He said, take time and teach how many nations? So don't ask me what I'm doing in UK. 
Don't ask me what I'm doing in the U.S. Don't ask me what I'm doing in Canada. Once he gives us the marching order, we have a scripture that backs us. If he says, teach all nations, it means he's opened the door for the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The last verse, he said, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, while you are on this business, know that I am with you all way, even to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. Purpose. Very, very important. Jesus was teaching us how to pray. And in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, he said, Thy kingdom come, and he said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is interested in the earth. Listen to me. Purpose and destiny is very important. It's not just enough to be anointed. It's not just enough to be warded. You must be purpose driven and your purpose i have taught you here endlessly and i will repeat myself again your purpose represents your contribution first to kingdom advancement and then to societal transformation every purpose in christ has a twofold approach it benefits the program of god and it benefits the nation wherein you are domiciled. There is no man that has been used by God that was a cause to his society. That is why I dare to say that the church is not a nuisance. The true church is not a nuisance. Not to Nigeria, not to any nation. We are active contributors of nation building. By number one, connecting people to faith which becomes the principle that guides their moral conduct etc number two giving them a superior orientation albeit driven from scripture that helps them to make quality decisions that eventually translate to advancement development and nation building the church is not a curse the true church is not a curse you shut down the church in any nation if that church is truly light, that nation should experience moral decadence and bankruptcy to a point that the government says, no, 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 no. We have seen your value. You are light. You are salt. Are we together? That means because Koinonia is here in Abuja, in Nigeria, and across the globe, connecting by way of covenant, every nation where we are represented, not just physically, but even if there is one person who is connected to this ministry anywhere across the globe your territory should see jesus in your life are we together praying in the holy ghost and jumping and becoming a nuisance to society is 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 not um you are not representing the gospel properly hallelujah the message of purpose let me finish up number six what is the sixth foundational pillar, doctrinal pillar, that makes up this vision? Are you ready? The message of unity and love. The message of unity and love. When we talk about love, and you hear me emphasize the unity of the body of Christ, it's not just a passion. This message is so powerful Bless God for my dear parents. They named me even after this mandate, not knowing. My name means the way to love. Very powerful name. Some of us come from backgrounds where they name you after something. If, if, if your name is, is a cause, change it. There is nowhere changing your name leads you to hell. People change their name. Jabez changed his name. Are we together? I said, what kind of thing did my mother call me like this? I love her, but I will change it. Oh God, change my story. Jacob held on to God and said, I'm not a cheat and a supplanter. Change my destiny. Hallelujah. I hope you know that names are very prophetic. Yes, it's not just a means of identification. When they call you, they are invoking something upon your destiny. Why would God change a man's name from Abraham to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, Cephas to Peter? Saul to Paul. It's in your Bible. Because of a name, a prophet's mouth was shut. John wanted to call. Only God knows what his father would have called him. 
he would have called one kind of Jewish thing that would have destroyed that young boy's destiny. And the angel says, shut his mouth. He's a priest. If he keeps calling by that name until he agreed, John on paper, his mouth open, no prayer. Hallelujah. Parents, name your children well. Don't hold a, a godless ceremony where people are drinking and smoking and somebody just comes out under the influence of spirits and say, it shall be called this. No. Right from the time you're... Listen, listen. I'm not... Please, I'm not being, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm serious here. This is... We're speaking about the mandate. Are we together? Let me advise you. Naming ceremony does not have to be some, some activity of the flesh driven by people who don't even fear God. I expect any responsible father from when your wife tells you she's pregnant, you should be on your knees. Like Manoah. Lord, this child that is coming from heaven, what is his destiny? What name do we call him? You don't sit down and place a lifelong identification upon somebody just under the influence of familiar spirits. Hallelujah. He shall be called John. For Jesus, the angel had to come and say, He shall be called Jesus, Emmanuel. Joseph did not say, Jesus looks like a nice name. If he was wrong, if he'd, imagine if Jesus' name was John. Look at the confusion that would have happened to their ministries. Back to our discussion. The message of unity and love. Listen to me. I truly believe with all my heart that the unity of faith is attainable. This is the reason why you see as a ministry and as a person, I have profound honor for the body of Christ. You will never hear me call a man of God's name to criticize him to tear him down no i may challenge wrong doctrines i have my reservations but god has given me the flexibility to navigate around the body i have preached in maybe there are few major denominations where i've not preached in severally all kinds of places have gone there and some of them they may not even think i may come because they feel ah will you come i say me i'll come Hallelujah. Expecting perfection from the body in terms of blamelessness is a waste of time. It will never happen. God gave me this revelation. Listen to my teaching, the unity of faith. It is very important. John said, I saw seven lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstand, he said, was one who looked like the son of man. The lampstand represents the Catholic church, the universal church. With all her imperfection, Christ is still in the midst of her. If you look for trouble in church, you will find it. If you look for Satan in church, you will find him. You will look, you, the church is a place where you find everything you are looking for. Because he says, he that seeketh, find it. You are looking for wicked people in church, you will find them. You are looking for hypocrites in church, you will find them. Are we together? You are looking for unserious people who are not born again, you will find them. Witches and wizards, you will find them. Familiar spirits, you will find them. The Holy Spirit, you will find him. This is a church. And in the midst of it, Jesus is still standing by that, her wife, like a faithful husband. Do you leave your wife when she's injured? If you run away from your wife because of an injury, are you a good husband? He's a faithful husband. He loves unto death. He stands by his Eve. No matter how bruised, he still stands. Are we together? Yes. We must preach unity in the body of Christ. This is why you see me advocating. I dislike and I detest men of God taking advantage of their pulpit to tear down other people no no don't if you're a man of god here don't do it don't do it that is not your assignment don't stand to tear down another man of god's work and criticize other people no 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 you can challenge wrong doctrines you can correct what needs to correct but respect what everybody is doing because you see the trouble in the body of christ will never end provided people keep fighting others every time you fight a man of god those who are loyal to that man of god and love the vision will respond to 
and so the, the the fight will be endless there are many people who have no business fighting one another is their fathers their spiritual fathers that have caused that thing because subliminally they have communicated a body language once i see you associating with this and that you are a demon you are a devil it is wrong that doctrine comes from the pit of hell it's a doctrine of demons once upon a time the disciples looked at some people and said should we call down fire and jesus looked at them this is a generation better than elijah generation elijah calls down fire jesus converts and brings people by his mercy are we together yes do not use your status your influence or your position to tear down no respect the fathers give the fathers their due honor our fathers of faith in this nation deserve our honor till the day they go to their graves I don't care what we see or what we do not see. Noah saw his father, I mean, um, the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness. One of them was laughing at the nakedness because Noah was drunk. The other went behind and covered the father's nakedness. Even though the father was drunk, he woke up and knew who saw him and said, who was watching me while I was drunk? And he cursed him. He said, a servant of servants shall you be. The eyes of Eli may be dim, but Eli is still prophet. Samuel, it will take Eli for your anointing to come to manifestation. Let's be careful, especially the generation rising. Just because by reason of elevated grace, we can see some things that may need to be corrected. You've heard me say it. The people we are raising are also seeing our own mistakes. There will be a corrected version of us. And there is nothing to be proud of, to, to be ashamed about. One generation improves upon another. We saw all the mistakes of Papa Hagin and our fathers. We read some of their books and we say, wow, this man is great, but look at the limitations here. This is what they saw. Revelation is progressive. All that we are shouting and bragging today, I've told you, there is a generation God is preparing. I'm only praying that humility will keep them till they even manifest. One day they will listen to Joshua Selman's message. And they will lovingly correct a few things. They'll say, wow, look at what he said. Well, it's at his level. <laughs> Absolutely. It will be pride to believe we are the omega of revelation. No. Does not, it, it, that, is, that is an insult to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sow a seed of honor now. So that when your turn comes, your sons, both physical and spiritual, even when they see the gaps in your understanding, because you sow the seed of honor to the fathers, you will also receive a harvest of honor from the sons. Are we together? Very important. I preach the message of unity to the body of Christ, and I've said it again and again. Make reference to my birthday broadcast. I don't know if it was last year or year before last. And I thought that there are keys that help people. Number one is mutual honor. You cannot downgrade. Listen, this is a charge, respectfully speaking. Every man of God that has the ears to listen to me now, listen. You don't tear down, demean a man of God, demean the work he's doing, demean the ministry, demean everything, and then expect unity. It doesn't work that way. It's like slapping you, matching your feet, pushing you, and then saying, come and hug me, we are one. And then doing it again. It does not work that way. See, let me tell you, as a principle, when I travel to regions, because of what God has done and, you know, the grace that he has placed upon our lives at this level, people get excited and sometimes I can already sense that, you know, these things come, frankly speaking, with maybe a sense of intimidation here and there. And I meet men of God, colleagues in ministry, senior colleagues, sometimes contemporaries, and then those who are looking up to us. And you can see sometimes this sense of unworthiness. Apostle Joshua Selman is in town. I am very quick to observe it. That listen, I have not come to downplay and demean and rubbish what the men of God are doing. It is because they are serious that we can even have a crowd to preach to. I have only come to support what they are doing. And you see that a lot of the pastors, their hearts are open and they support, they embrace. When you see pastors look like they are fighting one another, it's not because they are evil people. 
it is because either the man of God always gives an impression like everybody is doing nonsense we are the ones who know what we are doing it's a very wrong philosophy or number two Joshua Selman will come into a city and push everybody and make it look like you are not serious no sometimes we are sitting and discussing with men of God and I say okay about this question say something and say ah I should say what where you are here and I say what does that mean you know for some of you you'll be happy because it means ah be careful that's how many die if the Holy Ghost is there and is listening who are you not to listen <laughs> hallelujah I have sat down with people fellow men of God pastors and even my dear sons and daughters in ministry, sometimes I ask them questions and I keep quiet and I listen to them. And I listen sincerely to learn. One of the greatest transformation in this ministry came about maybe 12, 12 or 13 years ago. When I asked everyone who were very small then that time, maybe a little, not more than three, four hundred. Everybody to write his suggestion on what we can do to improve the ministry don't write your name so that we don't even know who you are be polite be sincere but state what can happen i sat down and i read every one of those suggestions i was amazed at the intelligence of the people i was leading can i tell you when you become alpha and omega your ministry will become a reflection of your limitation but when you open up sincerely knowing that i'm only called by grace it does not mean i know everything now people can be able to support you in love with superior intelligence anything i do not know something about or not enough about sincerely even if it is a baby that can teach me i will humble myself and listen how can i learn to improve myself run away from pride is a killer when Jesus sat down with the little children, he was not preaching to them. He was listening to them. You would be surprised what he got from them. Are we together? Are we together? So, you are part of this vision. Understand that God has given us a message to mend some of these unnecessary broken relationships in the body of Christ that has short-circuited the program of God and let me tell you for every man of God who has contributed to promoting love and unity in the body of Christ as a ministry we honor and we salute you may God bless you wherever you are and whoever you are whether in Nigeria and in Africa that you have become an active contributor listen I have traveled to places where I've seen the things that men of God have done for me. I've been humbled by their humility. Some of them literally shelved their ministries and everything. This UK conference we are planning now, you cannot imagine how many people, pastors and leaders, as though they don't have churches, plunging their all. How could you dishonor people who bend over backwards that much? No. I travel to go and minister and sometimes the men of God will tell me, Apostle, this is home. Feel free. Some of them will vacate their offices and vacate their seats for me to sit down and counsel people. And the man of God who heads the church will be standing somewhere like a protocol. And I feel very uncomfortable. I say, sir, please, come and sit down. Let's do it together. And they say, no, 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 Apostle. These people traveled and they came to see you. What, what security to be able to do that? And then I would come and now downplay them. Would that be fair? And then say, let's be one. No. No. There must be mutual respect in the body of Christ. Listen, if you don't believe another man's mandate, leave him with God. But an attempt to fight another man's mandate, when he succeeds, you will bend your head in shame forever. There are many, many young people today who were mocked at, talked bad at, and now God is helping lifting them across Nigeria, Africa, and those who said all kinds of things. Maybe they made mistakes. No. Don't call on clean what God has called clean. Are we together? Yes. I believe in people. 
when I travel to Zaria or sometimes you see people from various campuses, they come here to see me after service. And some of those people come to see me and they are looking as if they are looking at some angel and I tell them, gentlemen, listen, everybody was at this level. Some of us, we were not believed that when we were at that level. There were people who even prayed that we failed. It's the mercy of God that brought us this far. So my job is to love you and I look, if there is anything to correct, you correct in love and support them for as long as I live. I will be an active supporter of younger ministries coming. I say this and I will repeat it again. Where there is need for correction, you correct, you guide, you help, but you don't throw the baby under bad water. Some of the people God is raising will be by far better than us. Some of you are here looking at me. Don't worry. Just keep listening. Where you see that we did not do well, just pray for us. But I tell you, let God sharpen you like an arrow and you will become an improvement to what we are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, the message of unity and love. So after service, do well to hug someone. Some of you already came and you insulted everyone. Those who are sitting near you, it's as if they are unclean. Because you are prophet yourself. Who are sat down there now? Be careful. This sermon is to edit, to give you a new orientation. Don't look down at people. Yes, they may not have revelation like you. Yet, yes, they may not have this and that but be disciplined is this indiscipline that is destroying people in church they will tell someone come and take offering you will come and say i'm seeing something and spend two hours wasting time because of no closing prayer pray and go and sit down i hope you are learning you must learn to forbear learn to forbear learn to forbear Many people will annoy you, including me. Learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. More than forgive, learn to forbear. Apostle, you don't know my pastor. The way I'm even looking at him now is I say, I should carry it. Mm, that is now a Luciferian spirit. Don't go that route. No. Love. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments, Today, God has helped me, but I'm a product of many ministries. I have honor and regard to all the people that God used to raise me. Many of them are alive today. I honor them till the day that they see his face. My principal in the seminary is still alive. And every time I have the opportunity to honor him, I will honor him. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi honor them these are fathers of faith that saw us and believed in us when there was nothing can i tell you some of the pastors we used to do evangelism every saturday discipleship not this thing that pentecostals do proper discipleship that you sit down with a notebook already prepared it's not what you are guessing hospital visitations all of these things was part of the training that has made us today. Just because God has helped us to be where we are, we should never look down at them. Some of them may not have all the revelation, but we don't come close to the character and stability that some of them had. Some of you may need to go back to some of your orthodox churches and greet your reverend, even as a prophet, and bend your head and say, good afternoon, sir. And if he says, my son, how are you? John. Don't say, no, they now call me prophet John. What is that? <laughs> you bend that head and let him bless you sincerely. Are, are you listening now? Yes. Don't say, I've become a big man. There are people till tomorrow if I see, if I cannot go down my knees, I will bend my head in honor to them. Their impact in my life remains indelible till Jesus comes. 
one of the people that God used to get me filled with the Holy Spirit, they visited my family house sometime last year. When I was told, I was so, so happy. A dear woman of God, years ago from Kaduna State, that God used, God used this woman to file us in the spirit. As young people, it was under her watch and her brother, we started something called Operation Catacruz. He was praying in tongues till morning. Hmm. Now she's gone to be with the Lord. I said they should find where her child is. And may God grant me the grace that I will sponsor that child till she's done. hallelujah listen we're going to pray but i want to encourage you before i give you the last one some of you may need to go back memory lane and start thinking of the people who believed in you when you were nothing are we together now and start come back to them and say god has helped me now it doesn't have to be in the fivefold ministry and see what you can do to help them if they don't need your help you can do something to their children Oh, I hear that your child is now in secondary school. How much is the school fees? 20,000. We've paid half, remaining half. And you're a multi-millionaire. That's an insult to you. What is your millions for then? When you can sit down and say, young boy, just love God. Let me take off this stress and help you. Your father did this and that to me. There was a time I was crying. Your father could not preach, but he came and wrapped his arms around me. Don't forget people who help you when you rise. But my message is that as a ministry, we have been given a message of love and unity. I don't just preach to you. God knows and you know that I love you from the depth of my heart. Even the devil knows. You cannot preach to a people that you really do not love. When I meet with the workers, they know that I love them. They know that I love the leaders. I will never use people in this ministry. It is to love and to give. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep the message of unity and love so from tonight become an advocate of unity and love don't because of your love and passion for koinonia and joshua selman tear down any man of god and tear down any ministry and say you guys are just playing in your church you are playing games come to koinonia and see things mm -mm. that is not part of your assignment you are doing another thing that god did not ask you to do are we together till today as a man of God there are people today I can hear that they are organizing programs somewhere and I call someone and say okay send me this man okay how are you I hear you are organizing a program somewhere yes so apostle I'm just saying it not for pride but for you to know okay here's a little seed to support you people on what you are doing and some of them are aware of some of some of the not too good things that they've said and that does not matter like Joseph when God has elevated you, it's easy to forgive and let go. When you are lifted, you are lifted. You are lifted by God. There's nothing the devil can do about it. There's one song that says, The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. You know that song? The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. If you rise by knowledge, you don't fear your growth. Because wisdom and knowledge, according to Isaiah 33, are stabilizers. They bring you stability. You only fear your success if you rise by mistake. Are we together? Let me give you the last and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. The last doctrinal pillar that captures our mandate as a ministry is the message of lasting peace and fulfillment write it down the message of lasting peace and fulfillment this is where we teach on relationships we teach on prosperity we teach on success we teach on fulfillment because it is important we have been given that mandate by god to help people follow the path of lasting, even eternal peace and fulfillment. Three scriptures and then we pray. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 12. 
It's a scripture that has remained in my heart. And further by this, my son be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. It says, and much study is a weariness to the flesh. You may even want to add 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, Mark 8, 36, Mark chapter 8, it says, For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So listen, our pursuit as we help people is so that they can live meaningful lives. I've taught you that success is not a gift that you give yourself. Make reference to two of my teachings. Number one, the law of seasons. And number two, what seest thou? Two teachings that deal with the subject of destiny and fulfillment. Very, very important. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Your peace and your eternal destiny is very important. Most people do not understand that there is only one gift you can give yourself from a human standpoint. That is fulfillment. Success is not a gift you give yourself, unfortunately. Success by its definition even comes by being a solution, providing a solution to others. The only gift you can give yourself is the gift of fulfillment. We teach in our school of ministry personal transformation class. Let me borrow their lecture for one minute and teach you what we call fulfillment. I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity i take it again that fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life you have spent your days effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity according to Genesis 12 and verse 3 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed God wants us to live fulfilled lives second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 I believe I'm right on that scripture 4 7 please give it to us I have fought a good fight I have finished my cause I have kept the faith I taught you in a teaching this year or was it last year that life and destiny is warfare you must know how to fight life is a race you must know how to run life is a trust you must know how to keep it please hear me for as long as you are part of this vision among the many the buffet of teachings lined up for you year in year out that includes this prophetic year of open doors are teachings that touch across these lives that's why sometimes you see me come on sunday and i'm teaching you on matters of prayer and faith then giving you wisdom about life and destiny like the law of seasons then coming from another dimension and helping you understand faith understand relationships all of these messages are to honor these foundational pillars let me recap one last time then we are ready to pray number one the first doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision is the message of salvation the highest in order of priority revealing jesus as we say number two the message of transformation this is where the teaching ministry comes the ministry of the word of god and its power and ability to transform and to build number three the message of empowerment impartation is a major is a major mandate and call in this ministry to transfer the various levels of graces that make for the holistic equipping of the saints number four the message of the supernatural signs wonders deliverances breakthroughs by the spirit of god number five the message of purpose helping the body of christ and helping our global family to understand the dynamics and the principles that make for kingdom advance and then societal transformation i told you here that i have a covenant with god that i will never raise a people who are just spiritual alone 
there must be people who are useful to the kingdom and useful to society number six the message of love and unity we are nation builders we are builders of the body of christ that is why we must continue to make our advocacy in love to help galvanize the gray areas littered across the body of christ that god will help us that someday as preachers as members we will attain a state in the spirit that the bible calls the unity of faith not uniformity but the unity of faith that regardless our denominational barriers a day will come we can hold hands and thank jesus and shelve away our differences and focus on our similarities it's the same heaven that all of us are going to and then lastly number seven the message of lasting peace and fulfillment my highest definition of success as i have taught you is peace above and beyond progress progress is useless until peace is added to it jesus calls himself the prince of peace not progress peace is very important he said peace i give you my peace i live with you not as the world gives he said in this world you will have many tribulations but be of good cheer he says i have overcome the world the lord is speaking to our hearts tonight as we celebrate this mighty move of the spirit that has become a global movement an apostolic and a prophetic manifestation of the hand of god i was almost in tears throughout yesterday as i spent time just praying and thanking the lord for his goodness and all i could say to him was lord i thank you grant me the grace to continue to serve you grant me the grace to make that commitment god has helped us and tonight i'm about to speak over your life all those who are, are you know following and then as a global ministry but i really really want to thank god for what he has done it is amazing I cannot begin to say thank you to him. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great, you made me special, you made me great, I give all I have to you. Sing it one more time. You made me great, you made me special, yeah. you made me great, I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best Lord, is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. If Christ tarries at the end of my life, the greatest testimony that I desire is not that this man was powerful. The greatest testimony that I desire, truly, is not that this man went around the world preaching. That is wonderful. The greatest testimony that I desire, two of them. Number one, I have taught it in the teaching, the testimony of Enoch. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God and he was not. The second is that my life became a fulfillment of Genesis 12 and verse 3. That in thee all the families of the earth have been blessed you see we do not fear death we do not fear any of these things but whether he comes or we go to meet him the truth is that we are mandated by god to be busy doing the things that we have to do for someone you came to church tonight and god is speaking to you your life has not blessed anybody and you do not care You've never been part of, even the koinonia is not like you are really connected in truth. You are just there and not genuinely connected. Could it be that God is speaking to you tonight? It pays to live a life of vision and purpose. You must live a life that stands for something. 
the hymn writer says I'll do as it beats me whatever the cost I'll be a true soldier I'll die then the other one says till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ the day we stand before him what I desire to hear is well done thou good and faithful servant I gave you five talents you've been able to break make five more not one more not two more I gave you two talents you were able to make two more listen when Jesus comes he's not going to ask you how many degrees you have that is profitable for your earth work he's not going to ask you how many children you gave birth to it is only that which revealed him and brought him glory in the maze of mundane activities that fill our world today from social media addictions to all kinds of things let me honor this day for this ministry by reminding you again that a day will come you will stand before Jesus and you will give account of the gift of life the gift of leadership the gift of power the gift of wisdom he will tell you I gave one billion what did you do with it you say I spent it and kept some in my account because of fear and he says you're a wicked and unprofitable servant I gave you the anointing to heal the sick you healed only 10 people what happened I was lazy and sleeping around and enjoying honorarium. You are a wicked and unprofitable servant. I gave you access to revelation. What did you do? You did not mentor my people. You did not exhaust the grace given to you. And he said, well, I was angry. The people don't like me. Wicked and unprofitable servant. Do I sing that song? When it's all been said and done. There is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious jewel in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life while everybody is sitting let me make an altar call right now this is the right place you heard the first mandate Jesus 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 there is no need cajoling you we are celebrating 12 years of koinonia it's not 12 years of the ministry the ministry is older than 12 years but 12 years of this prophetic platform that has blessed the world and you are here whilst you heard me speak give us a chance to leave out that mandate right now you came to church perhaps invited by a loved one or you came as a result of a deep conviction you are in the season, a season with the holy ghost and he's really working upon you wherever you are right now i want to make an altar call we've stretched our time a bit tonight i need to speak over god's people wherever you are I want to give you a chance to truly make it right with Jesus it is true that no Jesus no life I don't care whether you have a church name you are a worker in church mm -mm. this is about your relationship with Jesus two calls in one 
you are yet to genuinely make Jesus Lord of your life and number two you feel a need as the Holy Ghost has stirred up your heart to rededicate your heart to Jesus genuinely that you will spend the remaining part of your days in purpose in wisdom and in all godliness whether you are here or any of the overflows down to the basement outside and the so many who are following online Jesus is calling you I'll make the call one to five very quickly wherever you are seated very boldly like Jesus himself is calling you I want you to leave your seat don't look at anybody just assume that it is you and Jesus summon that courage and come we love you this is home for you come 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 Koinonia, are you celebrating them come don't sit back if the Holy Ghost is asking you to come this is an opportunity he gives you apostle you don't know how I've lived my life can he accept me back come Jesus is able to give you a new beginning I assure you young old rich poor Nigerian European American Canadian Chinese come to Jesus the same Lord is rich over all who call upon him I want to live a life that's true I want to serve you Lord for you That song just came to my heart ladies and gentlemen I thank you for the courage to have come if you're joining them join please and if you're following online I'd like you to be ready right now as I pray with them open up your heart to Jesus give him a chance you've given your heart to things of lesser value you took greater risks with men and things why don't you give Jesus your heart if you could trust money if you could trust men with their vacillations and imperfections, does it really cost to trust Jesus? Come. Thank you. I'm going to lead you to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you sincerely from my heart. I love you with all my heart. And I salute you for the courage to come to Jesus. It always goes well with Jesus. It says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with them. I want to lead you to make this decision. It's a clarion call. And as I lead you to make that decision, let it be from the depth of your heart. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. You are coming to Jesus, the captain of your soul. May I please request that you lift your right hand, make it high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please repeat this after me. Do it with all your heart, knowing that Jesus is right here. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you I declare that I believe you died for me I believe you rose again for my justification right now I receive your mercy I receive your forgiveness I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am saved. I am a child of God. Amen. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. Thank you because they have made this decision. And I believe it is true. into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus come in today come in to stay come into my heart
Lord Jesus by the power of faith and the integrity of God's word I declare that your sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God I declare upon you that the power of sin the power of Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in the name of Jesus I declare that the righteousness that comes by faith is imparted upon your spirit receive peace with God and receive newness of life from tonight until forever I decree and declare that you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus much less name amen and amen God bless you please I like you to move to my right very quickly everyone in front here let's celebrate them to my right there'll be a group of counselors who will have a quick word with you just a quick word please do cooperate with them just a quick word and you'll be back to your seat it will not take a long time let's celebrate them thank you hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.